What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I will be driving my all-time childhood dream car, the Lamborghini Gallardo, and more specifically, the LP Generation, which is the second gen Gallardo. I fell in love with this car back when I was 10 years old, when the Gallardo was first introduced back in 2004. And then over the years, as the progression of the Gallardo continued, you know, year after year, the LP Generation just stood out and it's always been a car that I wanted to buy. And I am getting so close to turning this car into a reality. I think next year I'm gonna make it happen so today I'm down at HBI Auto checking out their 2009 LP 560 we're gonna do a mini walk around kind of check it out and then drive it we'll see what it's like to drive with the full point of view perspective and then we'll flip the cameras around on me and talk about my timing my uh, mentality and all that of how this car is gonna become a reality very very soon <laughs> So the Gallardo was introduced as a 2004 model year and then the LP generation which is the second gen car came out for 2009 and then it went all the way up to the last generation and then 2015 the Huracan came out. So this one is the LP 560-4 so we have four wheel drive, there's also a 550-2 which is a rear wheel drive version. We have the naturally aspirated 5.2 liter 10 cylinder pumping out around 550 horsepower and it's either paired to a six-speed gated manual or a six-speed single clutch automated manual. This one is the e-gear system, which is that automated manual, but I love the shape. It just has that classic wedge design that kind of Lamborghini is known for. And then the interior, I've always really, really loved the way these look, especially this one with the yellow. We get Alcantara, some stitching, and then the really nice black leather seats with all the yellow. And I love the diamond pattern that Lamborghini does on a lot of their cars especially up in the headliner. So they're now sitting in this Lamborghini Gallardo. I just love the way these things feel when you sit in them. I kind of fit like a glove in it, just the way everything is laid out. Uh, certainly is a nice place to be. And of course for me, being I've dreamt about this since I was 10 years old, almost 30 years old now. So it's been quite a long time that I've idolized this car. So now let's flip the POV and see what it's like to drive. All right, so setting off now in the Gallardo, we'll turn the front lift back down. So there's basically three driving modes. There's the normal one. You can also go back and forth between automatic and manual where it'll shift for you. You just tap the A button again. And then from there, you can just take manual control with the paddle shifters. We also have a sport mode. It says ESP sport. And then we have the Corsa mode, which is a little bit more performance oriented. So just leaving it in sport mode for now, manual mode. The single clutch is certainly a little bit interesting to get used to. Is a little bit between gear changes. But it's a really good seating position. I really enjoy that because I drive my cars. So I want to be able to use it, drive it anywhere. And I really like like the view out and everything. You have such a large windshield, huge glass on the left and right of you. And even over your left shoulder, you have really good visibility and not too bad over the right. car is just so flat so let's do a little bit of an acceleration from first gear so it automatically goes down so giving it a little bit of gas the clutch engages not bad getting up to some speed it's not crazy fast of a car but honestly it's pretty quick Especially being a 10 cylinder. So, Corsa mode, it should sharpen up a little bit. The brakes also do really well. I believe we have eight piston Brembos up front. Very similar setup to the Audi R8, which my brother actually owns. So, this is a very similar car to the first generation Audi R8 with a lot of similarities, uh, pretty much the same platform of a car. So it automatically downshift as looks like in the uh, Corsa mode. So we'll get back up to speed now in Corsa. 
So you gotta let the clutch engage a little bit. Wow, the transmission noticeably shifts a, a quite a lot quicker in Corsa mode. That's pretty cool to where if you want to kind of have more of that beating of the gear changes, sport mode lets you play with it. But then Corsa mode, you know, that's I believe Italian for course or track or something like that. That's obviously set up for the racetrack. You want more precision. Yeah, I like the power delivery a lot. Definitely a sweet car to be in and I feel like you can get pretty darn comfortable in it. We got a few more little sharp turns we'll test out. pretty pinpointy car. It's around 3,200 pounds, something like that. And with all-wheel drive, we have those front wheels to really carry you around. So for being, you know, nearly a 20-year-old platform, obviously this came out early 2000s, it still feels like a really solid, well-built car and pretty put together nicely to where it can handle. You know, it handles like something modern. Definitely a really cool car to drive. The pedal box is a little small, just the way your knees are. Um, it's a smaller car, I'd say, and because the engine is right behind you, it does hinder a little bit of that space right there. So with the seat, you know, set back a little bit, it's not too bad. I'm five foot 11 sitting back here, and I still feel like I do have pretty good room. Just leg room is a little cramped. But yeah, definitely pretty cool. Let's see how well it flips a U-turn being all-wheel drive. Pretty tight turning circle too. It'd be interesting to see how the rear wheel drive model is. And then even slow speed driving, you know, it's not too crazy clunky. I really don't mind this transmission, especially comparing it to my GTR, which is a lot more clunky in the slow speeds. So then flipping the camera around to my perspective of what it's like to drive the Gallardo LB560, the car that I have had on my list since I was 10 years old. So honestly, I'm planning to buy it next year. I think that's going to work out really well. Let's do a few little accelerations, play with the car once more, and then talk more about that. I love the sound this thing makes. It's so cool driving a single clutch gearbox to where it does that every gear change. It's because it literally is like driving in a manual. It is such a different experience than all these modern twin clutch gearboxes. But it is super neat. Let's get up to speed again. into just normal mode, keeping it in manual mode. So my plan for buying the Gallardo, like I said, I've been planning to do this since I was 10 years old. When I was 10, I had no clue how that would ever be possible. So these cars are going for around $140,000. Two years ago, before all the crazy things happened in the world, you could find an LP for maybe 115, 120. So they're a little bit more expensive than they were a few years ago. However, four years ago, I bought the R35 Nissan GTR for less than 70 grand. Today, that car is worth like 90 grand. So lucky for me, my R35 has appreciated the exact same amount that these Gallardos have. So that's just another reason why assets are so important. But because I bought the GTR when I did, it makes it to where while this car is more expensive than it used to be, at least the difference is the same. So, and that kind of leads us to the next point, which is how am I going to buy this? The GTR is gonna have to go to make this car possible. Now, I know that's going to upset a lot of our viewers. The GTR has been such a staple car for the last four years on the channel. However, in the next two months or so, the new Nissan Z is on the way. So, and when I bought the GTR, I traded in my 370Z for it. So the fact that I'm basically gonna get the Z again, I will still have that Z car in the garage. And the Z is gonna be a big focal point of the channel for the next year or so. 
all sorts of modifications to do to that car and just so many things to do with the Nissan Z. And being that it is a Nissan Z, it's still gonna give me that same type of content. The same viewers, I think, from the GTR are gonna wanna watch the new Z content. So there's gonna be plenty of content with the Nissan Z surrounding a Nissan sports car of some sorts. So even though the GTR sadly will have to be sold to make this car happen, um, I think it'll be worth it. On top of that, I have some information from Nissan that a new R36 GTR is coming out. So I believe next February roughly, Nissan should be unveiling the R36. And if you go to Nissan's website right now, the 370Z and the R35 both say sold out. So the R35 is done from Nissan and an R36 is coming. So my plan in the next month or so, take delivery of the Nissan Z uh, with the GTR. That has been such an important car for me. If you guys see on uh, Instagram, you'll see how uh, the sentimental value is there. Once I get married in a few more months, the GTR is gonna be at my wedding. After that, the GTR can go. It's basically done everything I ever could have imagined it to do for me. And there's not really any more content. It's worth so much money. So it makes it, it makes kind of sense to say goodbye to it. So if I sell that car for $90,000, $95,000, buying one of these for $140,000, i am back to a $40,000, $50,000 loan, which is what I started out with back when I bought the GTR. So this car won't really be crazy, you know, expensive or anything. It'll be a pretty normal loan that I'm used to. So with that said, if I were to do that, when I get the Gallardo maybe end of this year, next year sometime, at the same time, I'm planning to buy the new R36. I already told the Nissan dealer put me on the list for that car. I want to have first dibs when it gets out. And with this Gallardo, it's a very old school car. It is way different than a modern car. It's super cool. But it also is a car where I don't know how long I would actually own this. So it's kind of just one of those things I'm going to use my GTR since it's paid for, it's worth money. I'm going to use that car as basically the down payment on this to check this off the box. This has been the dream car since I was 10 and I just have to check it off the box saying that I owned the Lamborghini Gallardo. I just have to do it. You know, my own personal reasons, I just want to own this car so bad. And then after that all happens with the R36 coming out, I might end up just selling this six months, a year later to then buy the R36. So I'm not sure how it's really gonna work financially, but either way, there's always gonna be the Z in the garage and then eventually the R36. And also if I end up loving the Gallardo so much, I'll probably end up selling the Z and buying the R36 and doing what I did four years ago when I traded in the Nismo to buy the GTR. So regardless, car-wise, you know, there's always going to be a Nissan sports car there, but the Lamborghini Gallardo has been the dream car, and I can taste it. I can just, uh, I can feel this so, so soon. And um, the fact that the GTR is worth so much money, it makes it to where I can at least get into this, maybe have some fun with it for a short term, and then, you know, do whatever comes next. So when am I buying my all-time dream car? Really, really close, I think end of this year, next year. That's my goal. No later than the end of next year. I want to buy one before I turn 30. I'm 28 now. I will be 30 in like two years. So obviously I got, I got a little bit extra time than what I was originally planning, but I think I can make it happen when I'm 29, which I think would be pretty cool. So as we are back at HBI Auto, which big shout out to them for lending the car for the day. I'm going to do another video with it today. They have an awesome selection. I'm going to leave you guys with one more kind of tip or something, which is the decisions you're making right now are going to affect you in five years from now, more than you even know. Uh, five years ago, I was buying my red 370Z, $10,000 loan on a $22,000 car, nothing crazy out of the ordinary. Five years later, paid off GTR, buying the new Z in a few months, and I have this on the horizon on the list for the R36, just bought a house a few months ago. Like, you wouldn't believe what you can do in just five years from now if you really, really focus on budgeting your money. I still have an iPhone 7. I have a $20 phone plan every month. You know, I pack a lunch every single day. I drink water. I mean, the people who get their $1,000 iPhone every single year, they gotta get their Monster Energy drink every day, go out to breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. You know, they're probably dropping 50 bucks a day on food when you can make it yourself for $5. <laughs> you know, that new iPhone, that $150 data package, it adds up. And when it's been 20 years not doing that, to save up for a car like this, it makes these things super attainable and just so not crazy big deal. And that's a crazy thing. I never thought imaginable that this would just be not bad. 
Uh, this is a pretty affordable car to trade the GTR in for and really won't even be anything to blink an eye at. And it's literally because of those tiny decisions to pack a lunch every day, keep a cheap old phone. So just think that as you know, food for thought or whatever. 10 years ago, I had a $10,000 Scion TC. So the little decisions add up so much and it can make anything pretty possible. So that's kind of what I want to do when I buy the Lambo is to really portray that and to show you that anybody can do it. This stuff is easy. You just got to have a little bit of willpower to not kind of fall into society buying all the little things. So anyway, buying the dream car so close, I cannot wait. It'll be a heck of a lot of fun. That is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for plenty more content to come. We got all sorts of new cars coming later this year and next year, so we got some fun things coming. Uh, shout out to HBI Auto for providing this car. I'll have their website linked down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. You may have already said that. Subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.